Good morning, everyone. It's Sunday, November 29th. UMass President Marty Meehan joins us in studio this morning. Let's go on the record. He oversees a university system that has been put to the test like never before. Has the pandemic changed higher education here in Massachusetts forever? The man at the top is here to answer the question. Let's go on the record. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Welcome to OTR, everyone. I'm Ed Harding, along with New Center 5's political reporter, Janet Wu. Do you believe we've already reached the end of November? This is the final Sunday in November. And joining us in Studio C this morning is UMass President Marty Meehan. The large space allows us to keep all social distancing protocols in place. Our guest became the president of the UMass system back in 2015. He also served as a U.S. congressman from 93 to 2007. Marty, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming in. Great to be here. Thank you for joining us. Um, so let's address the elephant in the room on your campuses. What percentage of classes were in person this, pa uh, this past semester and how is remote learning going? Are you sort of confident that students are getting the same quality of teaching through a computer screen? Well, it varies from campus to campus, uh, Janet. Uh, for example, the medical school has been pretty much up, up and uh, up and running. Uh, you know, within the what the science dictate, dictates are allowed. Uh, there are labs and studios that are taking place on the uh, on the other four campuses, but it's uh, you know it's been pretty much virtual um, and. Um, uh, we think that the quality is high. We're making sure that we get students services they need, whether it be mental health or in some cases the athletic department is providing uh, a virtual uh, uh, training and, and, and workout uh, type of things to keep people uh, going. But it's been difficult. But I think, frankly, our faculty has done a great job. We've invested in technology. We've obviously invested in uh, text testing and invested in those instances where we need to clean classrooms, clean out labs. But uh, I think generally it's speaking, it's going well. And um, I'll tell you this, Janet, we, we basically went virtual in a matter of a couple of weeks in March when this started. And uh, we actually, uh, our retention rate was better than it's been in the past. So students are focused and we graduated 18,000 students uh, in, uh, in, and we look forward to doing the same thing again. But it's, it's difficult. We're hoping to get more classes open uh, in, uh, in the spring semester, uh, but we have to follow the science. So I, I understand that what's going to happen is that most of the students, undergraduates anyways, have gone home, will take exams from home, and they're not expected back until February, is it? Yeah, the first week of February is when our campuses are going to try to come back. So many campuses are struggling to stop the, the super spreaders, those large parties, those spontaneous gatherings. So how successful have, have you been on each campus? And I, and I understand that, that, that that's, a, that's a large question, but how successful on each campus have you been? Well, one of the things that I look at, Ed, is uh, testing. We've conducted uh, over, uh, well, about 250,000 tests, and, uh, you know, 0.2% uh, have tested uh, positive. So. Uh, Actually, we think that it's going reasonably well. There are some instances where people uh, have tested positive. Uh, we've uh, tried to get students to follow the uh, protocols that are necessary. But I think all in all, we're doing really well. We, certainly our rate of uh, testing uh, positive is, is much lower than the state average. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think we're doing reasonably well. That having been said, uh, you know, the Leon Panetta Institute in California did a study of the impact uh, that uh, this is having on students in terms of mental health, in terms of depression. Uh, we do want to get students back into a situation where they're on campus as soon as we possibly can. But also we're investing in, in online because we think uh, in order to reach adult learners, mm -hmm. that uh, there are going to be more and more of a need in Massachusetts and New England for better online programming. So there'll be evolution to online programming. I, I'm, I'm assuming you're thinking. I think right? there will be. There will be for sure. We're investing in in that and spending the time looking about how to uh, bring an online program to scale, uh, which is extremely important. It helps lower the price. But also uh, in this day and age, there are adult learners. Uh, by the way, a million in Massachusetts who have some college credit but haven't gotten a college degree, those folks are able to take a course, but maybe 10 o'clock at night or 11 o'clock sure. at night, they have family. So we need to take technology and adjust it and make sure that we provide quality education wherever the uh, student needs it, you, how you, they need you, it. You were just talking a few minutes ago about, about uh, dealing with what the kids are experiencing here, just you know, emotionally and, and psychologically and whatever. Well, part of the college experience is athletics. 
Yes. And part of that is practice and games. So what is your policy on athletics and practice and games? So we have two campuses, uh, one in Boston and one in Dartmouth that are Division Three, and they're pretty much not in operation at all. Uh, the two Division I campuses, uh, uh, Amherst basketball is back. They've played a few football games. Uh, that have uh, gone well in terms of testing, not so well on the field, but, uh, <laughs> but, but they're developing their programs. And then Hockey East has just started. Uh, UMass Lowell is in Division I in Hockey East. Uh, they, play, uh, uh, they played this weekend uh, successfully. Uh, and uh, and at UMass Amherst, that, their hockey program is always, uh, already up and running. The difficulty, though, Ed, is that we don't have people in the stands. We can't have people in the stands. And, you know, I look at the economics of sports, too. And one of the things we like about Hockey East is uh, our hockey teams, both in Amherst and Lowell, uh, they generate the revenue to support, uh, to support those programs. And you're confident that those team, the players on those teams are going to be safe through all of this, or is it sort of a game-by-game -game, uh, decision? Uh, both of our hockey coaches are very, they have uh, structures in place, they're following the protocols, but obviously uh, this is difficult on, on everyone, uh, but they are following the protocols, and uh, I'm certainly hopeful that uh, we won't have issues. But if we do have issues, we're simply going to have to shut it down. Um, let's talk about tuition. Um, what do you tell parents who complain about paying the same tuition when their kids, quite frankly, aren't getting the same education as they were pre-COVID? I mean, there's been lots of stuff out there about how in-person learning is much more substantial than remote learning. Yeah, well, first of all, we were going to put into effect a 2.5% increase, and we decided when uh, the pandemic hit that, uh, that we wouldn't do it, and it cost the university about $18 uh, million. The challenge is uh, we paid back to students $65 million for room and board and food services. Uh, we, uh, we have taken financially about a $350 million hit. Um, obviously, the faculty, the outstanding faculty, is still getting paid. They're providing the online education. So we're looking at it. We're trying to find ways to reduce wherever we can. Obviously, uh, students who aren't on campus aren't paying tuition and board. But my hope is that we get the vaccine is, is ready and we get out of this as soon as possible so we can go back to uh, regular classes. I will say this, Janet. Unlike other public institutions in Massachusetts and many private institutions across the country, our, our uh, enrollment didn't go down. In fact, it held steady, uh, which is important for us. So we think that students, are, uh, are, are, they want to get their degrees, and, and enrollment has been strong, and, and you know, we just have to make but sure we graduate about, another 18,000 students. What about applications for next year? How are they coming in Applications right now? of the Amherst campus are up uh, significantly, uh, thousands more uh, applying. So uh, we have broad interest in the quality of students that want to come to U UMass is up. So we, uh, we're doing well for, for next year, uh, but, but we're hopeful uh, by next year that we're going to be in, uh, in classrooms and on the athletic fields and, uh, you know, in our great facilities where students can work out and, and interact with each other. You, we're hopeful that next year we're back. You mentioned how that affected your budget overall, and, and, and it's affecting everybody. So here's the question. You know, how do you, how do you negotiate on Beacon Hill and you go knock on the door and you want more funding when everybody needs more funding? You know what I'm saying? It's not just an exclusive that UMass needs more Yeah, it's challenging, Ed, but I will say this. Uh, for this fiscal year, the, the, the state kept our budget uh, basically a level, which we're appreciative of in this circumstance where the state has fewer and fewer dollars. Part of the difficulty for us has been the uh, inability of uh, the government in Washington to get a package. And I serve on the, uh, uh, as a uh, director of the Association of Public Land Grant Universities, and we are working as hard as we can to try to get the federal government to help out here. And I think that's what ne what's needed to keep our colleges and universities uh, not only safe, but to keep them uh, financially viable. We are making tough decisions uh, day in and day out at UMass. We, uh, hope is not an option. We have to go by, uh, by, by what we need to do. So we're making tough decisions on all of our campuses. Uh, uh, all of our non-union uh, employees have been uh, furloughed, so we're, we're, we're challenged. But we think that UMass is going to uh, get out of this stronger than we get into it. And, and the fact of the matter is the Massachusetts economy needs a strong UMass. We're the third largest employer in the state. Uh, we do uh, $684 million worth of research. So we need to build this economy and, and get out of this mess, and UMass will lead getting us out of it. Marty Meehan's with us this morning. We're on the record. Stay with us.